First story. My entitled family neglected me and kicked me out at 18 in favor of my golden child twin. Now they contacted me after 32 years to reconcile after my father died, expecting my money as I rebuilt myself, saying we are family and family helps each other. My wife took their side and is forcing me to reconcile. Holy cow, never in my dreams would I have thought that I would be the guy posted on Reddit asking for advice. I normally tend to lurk and offer occasional advice. But this one might need external opinions. Sorry if this is a bit too long. So little backstory. I'm a twin, and when I was born, I hadn't developed my lungs fully, so I had to stay in the hospital for quite a while. Due to this, I had a lot of developmental and emotional issues. Dyslexia and anger issues. Now I don't know if this is the reason, but I believe that because of these issues, I was treated poorly by my family, like I was somehow a burden on them. Not to say they were abusive, but the neglect I received was a lot. For example, on our birthdays, I would ask for something, and my brother would get it instead. One year I asked for a boombox, not a big one, but a smaller one, they were all the hit in the 80s, and instead my brother got it. Christmas came around, and I asked for a remote-controlled car. My brother has one. I was told, due to funds, I had to wait until after the first of the year. It never happened, so I basically got nothing but clothes for Christmas. While my twin got toys. I tried for years to show I was as good as my brother. He was always good at school, while I, of course, struggled. In sixth grade, I worked hard to make sure I got good grades all Bs, which was good for me, and they said, Oh, nice, your brother got all As. I think it was at this point that I realized where I stood. I was just a roommate that they had to take care of, nothing more. So as a kid, I figured that if I couldn't get attention for positive things, then I'd do whatever, and if I got in trouble, at least they would be forced to pay attention to me. Not the brightest idea, but when you are 11 12 years old, what do you expect? When I turned 18, shortly after graduating high school, I was met at the door with a bag of clothes. I was told that I had to go, that they did their job, and that I needed to leave. I asked about my brother. They stated he was going to be somebody as he was going to college, where I struggled in school, so clearly I was going to be a bum. To tell you the truth, I was ready to go anyway. I already knew how they felt, so this didn't even bother me. I grabbed my bag, and my mom tried to hug me, but I ignored it and walked out the door, never looking back. It took a while for me to get on my feet. There is nowhere to go, no place to sleep, and not a penny in my name. But I had some friends to rely on, at least temporarily. Fast forward a few years, and I met my wife while I was working at a gas station. We just clicked. A few years later, we got married. We built a home together something I never really had growing up. Back in 2005, we had a baby girl and, two years later, a boy. From my perspective, my life is perfect. Family, home, and a great job in IT. That was until yesterday. I received a phone call from my mom, telling me my dad had passed away, and that she and the family would hope that I could make it to the funeral. Mind you, I don't know how she got my number, but probably from my brother. I was shocked, to say the least. I told her I was busy working, which is why 12-hour shifts are fun, lol, and would let her know later. She started to say something to the effect that they missed me and would like to be a part of my life or something like that. But I hung up. Kinda rude, I know, maybe even ahesh. But from my perspective, I haven't heard a word from these people in 32 years. So why would I give them any more of my time? I told my wife, and although she knows about my family, she thought it would be the right thing to do. I saw that my mom reached out to tell me something she could not have told me. They are family, and probably feel bad and want to reconnect. Mind you, my wife has a big family, and they've always treated me like family. So her view of family is different than mine. However, as far as I'm concerned, I already have my family. Those other people are former roommates. I have no obligation to anyone but those who I care about and who care about me. Wife and kids. I get it. My wife loves me and is thinking of me and how I might regret not going. It just seems like they now know that dad is gone and life is short. So now guilt is creeping in. And they don't want to die with that guilt. I mean, do I go at the wife's suggestion and be miserable being around people that I learned to let go of and not care about in order to look like a better person? Or do I stay home and continue to live my life? Putting my own family first and ignoring those people. Guess asking those that have gone NC with their family if they let them back in. Was it worth it? Or did it backfire in your face and be something you would never do again or suggest to others? Additional info. Mind you, I live in Florida, 
and they are probably all still in California. So that would be a long trip, and not sure worth it. As far as my twin, we don't talk not that we hate each other. We just walk different paths in life. I get or send the occasional Christmas card, but that's it. Unless some miracle has happened. My mom is probably still the self-centered person she's always been. She always wanted to be seen as a good person by family and friends. Update. Okay, first, holy crap. I didn't think my post would get so many comments. I tried my best to respond to as many comments as possible as they came in. But after signing out to cook dinner and spend time with the family, when I came back, there were hundreds of comments. So, although I didn't respond to each one, I did read them all. All 750 plus even had to read some this morning. Second, thank you to everyone for taking the time to read my post, and then to take time out of your day to comment, share your story, post some kind words, and even the few that were blunt about what I should do. Third, at the suggestion of so many of you, I sat with my wife, and we went through the comments together, so she could get a better understanding of where I was coming from. Although some were a little brutal, she understood and apologized for overstepping. I reassured her that her heart was in the right place, and there was nothing to be sorry for. Fourth, at the suggestion of someone who posted sorry, lost your name in the vast comments, I contacted my brother. I did just that. Update time. Okay, folks, I hope you are ready for this SHT show of karma that is about to unfold. Strap in and hold on. So I called my brother to talk to him. I asked him if he had time to talk, and he did. I asked him if he gave my number to his mom, and he mentioned he did. He thought it would be better to hear about our dad's death from mom than from him. I asked him why I would want to hear from someone who kicked me out at 18 and has never heard from me in 32 years. He was shocked. He told me that mom said that I could stay, but I had to pay rent. But I told them I would never pay rent and left on my own. As others said in my OP, narcissistic people do and say things to make it about them and make themselves look better. I can't really be surprised at this to tell you the truth. This is exactly who she was back then, and even now. Make me look like the bad apple and hurt them, as the ones who never do wrong. We had a good talk. We never got that sibling twin bond back. But we did agree to try, and at least catch up more instead of sending Christmas cards and birthday messages. Like I said in my OP, he's not a bad guy. We just walked different paths. So then I asked him why mom wants to reconnect, and why she wants me at the funeral. You guys were right. It turns out that they spent everything they had, their entire lives, trying to live like the Joneses. Now that dad is gone, she has nothing to her name. No savings, just the small amount of SS per month, and a small portion of my dad's pension. Living in a small trailer, they heard that I actually became somebody. And she was telling others that she couldn't wait to see me at the funeral. She was hoping I would bring my kids so she could see her grandchildren. She actually told my brother that I would be coming WTF and was hoping that we could fix our relationship. I'm guessing so that she could start asking for money. As many of you said she would do. I see she's dirt poor now. I informed him, after thinking about it mostly listening to you guys, that I would not be attending, and at no time did I tell his mom I was coming. I feel bad dad is dead, but I already mourned them years ago. I'm at peace with myself, and his or her deaths are and will be no different than those of a stranger. I feel it won't be for me if I go. It will be for his mom and making her look good. I'm not interested in doing anything for her. They wrote me off 32 years ago, and I'm in a way better place without her toxicity, narcissism, and lies. I have to give him credit. He wasn't a jerk about it. He understood where I was coming from. I told him, if anyone asks why I'm not there, tell them the truth or lie. At this point in my life, my immediate family is more important than people who've been absent from my life for 32 years, so don't really care what he tells them. As far as his mom, I'll be staying in NC and blocking the number that she called me from. My wife and I both agree that it's best for me and our family. Not only for mental reasons, but also for financial reasons. I didn't work as hard as I did to get where I'm at and lose it all to her. As some of you suggested, I'm going to say a small goodbye to my dad on my own time. Again, thanks, internet strangers. I never knew so many random people could be so nice and caring. This old guy truly thanks all of you. Second story. My entitled sister cheated on me with my husband and said they didn't get physical because they love me. So, I filed for divorce and cut ties with them. She then abandoned her kids at our parents' doorstep and moved in with him. Now, she's blaming me for ruining her life after he dumped her not even a week later. 
My sister's bestie told me that she feels guilty for being a snitch, but that she couldn't do this to me anymore because she thinks that I am a kind person and don't deserve this. My sister and my husband have always gotten along very well. They're both brilliant. Both lecturers are at the university, and they have so much in common. I am not stupid, but I never loved school, and I have a high school education. They have become best friends throughout the years 14 years, but never once did I feel uncomfortable about it since my husband has shown me nothing but love and respect. The opposite. Until now, I counted myself lucky that the two people that I love the most in this world get along so well. But now, I feel nauseated. The bestie sent me screenshots upon screenshots of her conversation with my sister. My sister has feelings for my husband, and she appears to know that my husband feels the same way about her too. In one of the texts, my sister wrote that she loved me too much to do anything to hurt me. In another, she wrote that I am too dear to both her and my husband to do anything that would hurt me. She seems to think that they're soulmates, which is odd because the talk about soulmates came up once between my husband and me when I told him that I didn't want us to be soulmates. He was curious and asked me why. I told him that soulmates meant that we were programmed or destined to fit together. There's no free will involved, and I want my love to come from a free space, not a predestined place. He laughed and said he loved that. But apparently they're soulmates. I know that I need to talk to him, but I am dreading that. I am in so much despair right now. Edit. Hi. Thanks for your help. I asked how I would be sure before asking my husband, so he wouldn't just blatantly lie, and you suggested looking into his phone. Thanks for your suggestion. I did now. I told him about my sister's conversations with her best friend, and showed him the screenshots. He was shocked at first, and said he had no romantic feelings for her, and had no idea about her feelings, so I asked to see his phone. I read their texts and emails and I was shocked that their contact was way more intense than I thought. They talk on a daily basis. They have lunch multiple times a week. There is nothing asexual in the text. But yeah, he is stupid if he doesn't know that she loves him. And he must think that I am stupid if, after reading, I wouldn't get the feeling that he has some feelings too. In one of her texts, she wrote that she wished they had met first and under different circumstances. His answer wasn't totally dismissive. He wrote, yeah, it would probably have been different. When I asked him about it, he said, well, yeah, if he didn't know and love me, he would probably have been interested in another, my sister included. But he loves me, and she is a close friend of his. So there's no actual relationship between them. But I am not sure that is enough for me. I think they are both wrong, and should have nipped it in the bud way earlier. I don't know what to do now. I think I need time for myself to process this. I don't feel well at all about this, and I don't want to make decisions from a place of fear, hurt, or convenience. I am sorry. I can't answer all private messages. I don't use my phone that often. But our ages are. My husband is 45. I am 42. My sister is 38. My husband and I have been together for 16 years and married for 14 years. My sister is single. I am not a stay-at-home mom. I have my own business. We don't have children. My sister has two from a previous relationship. Edit again. So now I have had some long talks and discussions with my husband. He seems to think that this is getting bigger than it is supposed to, because I told him that I needed time alone to think and digest this. He said that he doesn't understand why I am this hurt since he loves me and nobody else. I didn't relent, however, and he admitted that he knows that my sister is in love with him because she has told him so. But she knows that nothing can happen between them, so she is fine with just friendship martyr. He loves her, but not romantically, and he is happy to have a friend like her. Their friendship is important to him and he doesn't want it to end because I don't trust him and his love for me. He made a comparison to my best friend and asked what I would think if he asked me to cut my best friend from my life. He admitted that, intellectually, he has more in common with her than with me, but that the heart doesn't always choose who we are more compatible with, and that he loves and is physically attracted to me. I think this whole situation is messed up. I am repulsed by them both. I texted my sister all her screenshots, and she wrote that she was disappointed in her bestie, and that, your husband is all yours because I would never let anything happen that would hurt you, because you are the most important person to me. In other words, they are both contradicting each other, since both seem to believe that they are the ones who are not letting a relationship between them grow for my sake. Comments. Art needs more floof. You need to have an honest conversation with your husband. And if you have a hope of saving this relationship, he and you need to go into low contact with your sister. And you need couples therapy. Best case your sister is suffering from loneliness. In the worst case, 
they are having an emotional or physical affair. Either way, inappropriate behavior has been happening that has been deliberately hidden from you. They say they don't want to hurt you. Behaving inappropriately hurts you. Lying about it and hiding it hurts you. They are already hurting you, and they have not stopped it. I know this conversation fills you with dread. But here is the thing. It's not going to go away, and it is not going to get better until it is exposed to the light, aired out, and addressed. Just tell yourself, it is like going to the ER. You can't start to heal until the injury is found and diagnosed. You have found the injury. Now you have to find out what the injury consists of and start treating it. As terrible as the possibilities are, I always find that knowing for sure is easier to deal with than having the unknown dangling over my head like Damocles' sword. OP. That's how I always felt. I would rather know the truth. Until it happened to me. And now I don't even know what to say. Marv 115. If what the friend sent you is true, you need to take a moment and gather your thoughts before this talk you need to have with your husband. If possible, check his phone so you have a first-hand look at the communication, not the friends. If real, the emotional affair is more than enough of a betrayal. Please be careful. OP for me. Even an emotional affair is a deal-breaker, unfortunately. Environmental Art 591. Don't bring it up with him until you are ready to see proof if it's there. Because as soon as it is brought up, you need to see his phone so that nothing can be deleted and your sister can't be warned. He needs to hand over his phone right away. Tired in short. TBH it fully could be one-sided. I agreed to look through his phone, but I would ask. I would first show him the messages. Then see how he reacts. If he confirms, you got to the bottom of it all immediately, and you have no need to hurt yourself further with whatever is on that phone. If he denies, then I would check. Then, if he says he's shocked too and has no feelings for her, then you say, I hope you can understand my point of view when I ask if I can check your phone right now. It reassures me that you're shocked. But I need an extra layer of confirmation. My STBXH's and my sister's love for me was worth one week. One month later. I have written here and made a few comments about my soon-to-be ex-husband and my sister. I left him about a week later. And he texted me day and night about how much he loved me and wanted me back. Then he just stopped. That's when I found out that my sister left her children at my parents' house and moved in with my husband. This made everything come out to the rest of my family. And my parents were shocked. And my mother really looked like she was already showing PTS symptoms. About how disgusting she felt this whole thing was. She kept calling it incest and asking if that was even legal. I guess that is how much my sister cared not to hurt me if you read my first post. Even though I have been so composed and calm that I surprised myself. I still tried my hardest to look back on my whole life, childhood, and upbringing to understand when it all went so wrong. What my sister did felt like something that was the result of years of resentment, or at least indifference towards me, and our relationship as sisters. So how did I miss that? She never cared about me, did she? If she hadn't, how could I have been so blind? Then, not even a week later, I heard that they had ended things. I found out in the oddest way possible. My sister texted me. It was the first time she texted me since everything started. She just wrote. UB, I hope you burn in life and in hell. I was very confused because she spent that week sharing cheesy, deep quotes about love and soulmates and romantic Instagram stories with my sister. But apparently, that was over. STBXH has blocked her everywhere, and she moved out. Because she came to my parents to get her children and had a meltdown when they asked for an explanation. STBXH started calling and texting me again asking me to meet because he wanted to explain because he loved me and wanted me to understand. He wanted to meet at least once before we started to meet with the lawyers involved. So that is that. This has left me even more confused than if they just ended up together. I understand falling out and falling in love. I'm breaking up and starting over, but I can't explain this. My sister keeps calling me his only love and true friend. And until I left, she kept promising that she would never do anything to hurt me. She left her children at my parents' doorstep and didn't answer their calls or texts for a week. And all of this for a week. What were they thinking? Has anyone here heard of something like this happening? People throwing everything away for not even a week. Update. On the same day. After one week of being in love and my sister leaving her children at my parents' door to be living in my home with my soon Tobe ex-husband, flaunting everything on social media and sharing cheesy quotes, she moved back to her apartment and got her children from my parents. They aren't friends on Facebook, and he unfollowed her on Instagram. Now she is saying that I have ruined her happiness, and he started texting me again, begging me to talk in private, 
because he needed to explain everything before we started getting our lawyers involved between us. I understand that people fall out of love, and sometimes they can't control who they fall for, and they can hurt many people around them. But I never heard of two people throwing everything they pretended to care about for one week. Comments. Wielder of aphorisms. Speak to my attorney. I'd have that as my outgoing voice message. OP. I haven't answered any calls from him, his family, or unknown numbers. I don't answer any texts either. I do not have a great relationship with his family, especially his mother. We lost our child, and they blamed me for not wanting more children afterwards, when it was both's decision. Lost and dumbfound. From your last post, it seems like maybe your ex realized they had too much in common, or that the idea of them being together didn't match reality, and your ex decided to end it rather than forcing it. It's unhinged that your sister went from, you're the most important person to me, to, rot in hell. You left, and she had what she wanted, your husband. His no longer wanting to be with her has nothing to do with you. OP, not only in hell, but in life too. I felt cold reading her text, after she gaslighted me for so many weeks and years, really. OP, no I left him after he insisted on, meeting her for lunch to discuss, my distress. I left him and gave him divorce papers. That was a week after my OP. Then, a week later, she dumped her children at my parents' place, and went to him he doesn't want children. And less than a week later, she moved back to her home, sent me a message to say I ruined her, and took her children back. My parents visit to take the children out for dinners and play dates. My sister hasn't talked to them yet. Georgie Agile 38. That text from your sister, as everything imploded around her, is fascinating. Truly. She takes no responsibility for blowing up her own life. Your STBX's life, or your life. I don't know how much responsibility your STBX is feeling. She dumps the blame for her distress in its entirety on you. The total absence of any sense of personal responsibility is, from a distance, fascinating. Your sister wouldn't be the golden child in your family, would she? I am so sorry the two of them have done this to you. No one deserves this sort of betrayal. OP. No, according to her, I was the golden child. I guess she is right about that too. Third story. I had a one-night stand and got pregnant with a guy. But I couldn't find him. Now, ten years later, he's returned as my new manager at work. And I've let him know he has a daughter. Now, my co-workers are bullying me to resign and spreading rumors that I'm having an affair with my manager. Cancelling my paychecks. The backstory. I went back to university in my late twenties to do my PhD and shared an office with a few other students for many years. One of the students, Jacob, completed his thesis and was moving back to his home country. So we all went out for congratulatory or farewell drinks. One thing led to another, and Jacob and I spent the night together. A few weeks later, I realized I was pregnant, and I had no way to contact Jacob. His university email and mobile number had been deactivated since he'd left the university and the country. I didn't need anything from him and was fine to raise the child alone, but I thought he had a right to know. I googled him a few times over the years but never found him. This past week, our department head emailed everyone to introduce and welcome our new manager, Jacob, with a photo and a blurb about his education and work history. So I know for sure it's him. The night we spent together changed my life because it made me a parent. So I have thought about Jacob from time to time when my daughter asks about her dad, or I notice a genetic trait she didn't get from me. However, I doubt Jacob has given that night a second thought. I have no idea whether he will have any concerns about being my manager given our history or whether I'm making a bigger deal of this than I should. For what it's worth, in my years of sharing an office with Jacob, he seemed easygoing and practical. In our company, it is common for everyone in the department to reply to these introduction emails and introduce themselves, welcome the newcomer aboard, and explain how their role will interact with theirs. I'm not sure if my email should note that Jacob and I studied together years ago as a way to get that out in the open. Or should I email him individually and offer to have a discussion about keeping our history out of the workplace if he thinks it's needed? I'd appreciate any suggestions for language that indicates I'm not concerned and will be completely professional. And then, in direct contradiction to that, I'd also appreciate a script for a separate email saying, Can we please meet outside of work because I need to tell you something important about our history? So I can tell him about his daughter. If you or any commenters think I shouldn't tell him, or that I should let him settle into his new country and new job first, I would definitely take that on board. Additional information from OP after Allison pinned her comment onto the post. Thanks for your comment at the top, Allison. The extent to which I tried to find Jacob wasn't relevant to my question, 
so I didn't include the efforts I made. For the commenters who are curious understandably, I really did try when I first found out I was pregnant. I asked the other people we shared an office with, but no one had any information. We were students who shared an office and sometimes went to the university bar together. We never spent any time together outside of university. I asked Jacob's thesis supervisor, but it was Christmas Australian summer here, so he was on leave for two months. When he got back, he gave me the address on Jacob's file, which was, of course, the Australian address he didn't live at anymore. The university had a next-of-kin Australian contact number on file for his aunt, but no one ever answered it when I rang. Jacob is Chinese with a very common surname, and Jacob is just the name he used in my country. I don't know his actual given name, so attempts to find the correct Mr. Wong in a country where they don't use Google or Facebook went nowhere. I searched for recent publications about Jacob's thesis topic and found a paper with Jacob Wong as one of the authors. I contacted the corresponding author and asked for Jacob's email, but they never responded. By this point, I had to give up because I was so sick with hypermesis gravidarum and needed to focus on my baby's health. Update. Eight months later. Thank you for answering my letter. You were right. It was a really big deal. I was viewing the Jacob as my manager problem from his perspective until I told him otherwise. It was just a simple one-night stand over a decade ago, and it didn't seem like a huge problem. I hated and appreciated the reality check. I regret reading the comments, but thank you also for moderating them as quickly as you did. A lot happened in a short space of time thankfully. I already had a therapist. First, I spoke to my union rep, who said, Say nothing but call us if HR tries to set up a meeting with you. Staying silent and having Jacob independently declare the prior relationship when he arrived would have been problematic because I'd still end up in the same position and I would have lied by omission. Our HR team can be gossipy and they know the age of my half-Chinese daughter, so I needed to have as much control as possible over the disclosure. I spoke to an employment lawyer who reviewed our policies and, at his suggestion, I wrote an email to HR declaring a prior relationship with Jacob and then I was immediately pushed out. Even if you have all the legal support in the world, you can't prevent someone from doing something illegal. You just have recourse afterwards. In a meeting with my lawyer, the union rep, HR, and a member of the senior management team, I was asked to resign. When I said no, they insisted on a statutory declaration about the relationship with Jacob, stating what happened, when it happened, how many times it happened, and who initiated it. I also said no to that. We ended the meeting with each side agreeing to think about possible solutions. The company's solution was to start messing with my pay, my benefits, my swipe card access to my office, my computer login, and my email calendar account. They spread rumors about me, and I heard co-workers whispering that I'd had an affair with a manager. They sent me for a random drug test at a time when I was scheduled for an important meeting with clients. They cancelled accommodations that had been booked for upcoming travel which I only found out about because I was getting paranoid and called the hotel. I can't describe how awful it feels to know that someone with this kind of power over your job is devoting their time and energy to thinking of ways to screw with you. Every day I was going into work wondering what was waiting for me, and it was wearing me down fast. The advice from the union rep was to go back in time and follow their first piece of advice, or just keep documenting everything as we prepared to take legal action. The lawyer estimated that it would take at least a year to get any kind of resolution, and I didn't even want the job anymore. By this point, I wasn't sleeping much, and I had cried a few times at work. I was beginning to crack, and we were only just getting started. So, I resigned. I wish I'd held up better under the pressure, but it was all just too much with the looming deadline of Jacob's start date at our office, and whatever way HR was going to drag him into this. I'm lucky that I can take my time looking for a new job so I've had some space to process everything. Outside of the work stuff, I spoke with a family lawyer who outlined all the possible ways this situation could go and what the most likely outcomes were. Basically, my daughter is old enough that what she wants would get heavily weighted by a court if it came to that. I have spoken to my daughter many times about her father. I told her what I knew about him and that I had tried to contact him. I've offered for her to see a therapist if she ever wanted to talk about it with someone who wasn't me, and she has always said, thanks. But no thanks. The family lawyer helped me write a letter, which I left for Jacob. I told him about his daughter, said I wasn't trying to get anything from him, and gave him the contact details of my lawyer. After a few weeks of me freaking out that HR had somehow intercepted the letter, he emailed my lawyer. He was the easygoing and practical Jacob I remembered. He was still processing it, but said he wasn't going to take any legal steps. 
He offered us his family medical history. He apologized if I resigned because of him. And he said he would like to meet our daughter if she's interested. She also has some siblings. I told her all this, and she said she's happy that she has her father's contact information. But she doesn't want to meet him right now. She's of the view that having him in our lives would cause unwanted disruption. And she doesn't even know about the work clusterfudge. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.